Hi, I'm Sean Roylands, and today we're going to talk about gross profit margin. All right, so first of all, what is gross profit margin? So there's two formulas that really help us arrive at gross profit margin. So the first one is we want to calculate our gross profits. Gross profit we get simply by taking our total sales minus our cost of goods sold over the year or over that period of time. The second thing then to get our gross profit margin is we take the gross profit that we just calculated and we divide it by our total sales. That gives us our gross profit margin. So those formulas look great, but for me, I needed to see it in like a real world example. So let's go ahead and look at, a, at an example here. Let's suppose that last year I had $250,000 in total sales. My cost of goods sold was $150,000. And so my gross profit ended up being $100,000. So then to get my gross profit margin, what I need to do is take that $100,000 of gross profit, divide it by the $250,000 in total sales, that gives me a 40% gross profit margin. All right, so that's great, um, but why does gross profit matter? So gross profit is important because once we take the, out the, the actual cost of the goods sold, now we still have to pay all the rest of our, our bills and then hopefully have some take home profits in the end. So we have things like rent, we have salaries, administrative costs, we have advertising, utilities, um, and, and then in the end, profits. That hopefully as big as possible there. Um, so let's look at a little bit more of a detailed example and kind of see how that plays out. So just like what we looked at a minute ago, if we took that and looked at it in a monthly form, we might have $20,000 in total monthly sales, then $12,000 in cost of goods sold, that leaves us $8,000 of gross profit for the month. If we take the $8,000 divided by the $20,000, then we have a 40% gross profit margin. But now we take that, we subtract out our rent, our advertising, our salaries, um, and, and our various expenses. We end up in this example with $2,450 in net profit. So perhaps I'm satisfied with that, but maybe I want to increase my net profits. So how can that be done? You know, there's the age old, you know, increase revenue, decrease costs. And that can help for sure. And, and, and those are some really important elements to increasing our net profits. However, if we do that and we don't keep our gross profit margins, we can actually increase revenue and yet not make more money because our gross profit margins are suffering. Same thing with de decreasing costs. We cut our costs down, but our margins decrease. We still might not end up uh, making money. So those are great, but we need to make sure we're, we're maintaining healthy gross profit margins. The other thing is we can keep our revenue exactly the same and we can keep our expenses exactly the same. And if we improve our gross profit margin, we actually make more profits. So what is a good gross profit margin? You know, there are some examples out there um, like grocery stores and other uh, really high inventory turn industries where margins can be below 35%. But for most retailers, we want to be hitting somewhere near the, the, the center of this target. We wanna be hitting 40, ideally even 45% gross profit margins. If we're not hitting that point, the good news is, is that there's oftentimes some fairly straightforward things that we can do to help improve those gross profit margins. So speaking of, what are some specific ideas that we can use to increase our gross profit margins? So number one, we need to make sure that we mark up our prices sufficiently. Typically, we want to make sure that whatever our cost is that we get the item for from the vendor, that we're going to do at least a 2x markup on that, perhaps even a 2.2x markup. So if I get something for $10 from the manufacturer, I want to be putting that at a $20 price, maybe even a few dollars more, $22, even $24 as, for my, uh, as far as what I'm going to price the product uh, for my, cons my consumers. The second thing then is we need to make sure that we're not too generous with our discounts, sales, coupons, etc. So for example, a lot of times what I see retailers doing is they have an item, it's been sitting there for a while, they wanna cl you know, clearance it out, and so they just slash the price 50% off, let's get the, this thing out of here. But are there other things we can do to get rid of it without having to sacrifice all that margin? Can we potentially bundle it with you know, some other products or some other services? 
are there other approaches we can take, maybe discounting it a little bit more slowly to get rid of it without sacrificing all those margins? The, the final thing here is, is we can be more selective with what we purchase from the manufacturer. So the items that we're purchasing from the manufacturer, um, if, if we're buying things that our consumers really want, then they're gonna come in and they're gonna buy them. But if what, we're, what we end up buying and put on the shelf isn't something that is attractive to them, then it's gonna sell more slowly and we're gonna be running into this issue of how do we get rid of this product. So we wanna buy the right items and we also wanna buy the right quantity of those items. We could have the right item, but if we buy twice as much as what people really want, we're still stuck in the same spot. So we wanna buy the right items, the right quantities, so we can help maintain our margins. Okay, I hope this presentation on gross profit margins is helpful for your retail business.